Welcome aboard again, it's good to see you back in the shop. Um, last time we made the parts for a tool post grinder out of a palm router and um, this episode we'll assemble it all and try it out and here's a spoiler, it worked really well. Onwards. This is the state of play at the moment. Um, I'm reasonably happy with the shroud. Uh, it needs a little bit of uh, filling because my welding's really poor. Uh, and then a coat of paint, but that's pretty much done. Oh, I also need to put a, a, a screw to retain it. But uh, yeah, I'm happy with that part. That's good. And as you've just seen, I got this wrong. The position of this cylinder, the, the, the clamp ring, is actually 20 millimetres lower than it should be. So uh, I need to go back to CAD and find out what went wrong. In the meantime, uh, I'm really not happy with this anyway. So what I think I'm going to do is, if I just take this nut off and that piece, if I cut this off down there and down there, with me portable bandsaw, then I reckon that I'll only need to make um, three more parts. So this part, this part, and the base plate, and then re-weld it all together. So that's relatively easy to do. Okay, we're back in CAD. Uh, I found the sketch that needed to be modified. I'm, I'm showing you this after the fact, to be perfectly honest. Uh, I'd already made this modification. That dimension there, 47, was where the mistake happened. It was originally 27 mil, which is why I got the 20 millimeter discrepancy between the center heights. So I just uh, quickly fixed that, remodeled the parts, and uh, get on and export them and manufacture them. I've been to one of my uh, local steel pushers and I've bought some more cold rolled, bright drawn, I think it's bright drawn under there, um, steel. So um, uh, I've got some, some good raw stock to work with. So uh, let me cut all this to size and uh, we'll get stuck in.
They give the noise, but uh, I made a modification. Uh, here are the two new um, webs. They're absolutely um, spot on. Uh, but the base plate, I left um, a, a raised section so that once this is all um, assembled and painted, I could um, actually have just a bare metal piece here and a, and a neat transition between the, the um, bare metal and the painted surface. And um, on the last pass, the, uh, I hadn't realised I'd made a mess with the, um, with the program and uh, I got the stock offset incorrect, so it's uh, spiralled in one millimetre deep. So uh, I thought, that's going to bug me, so I'm making another one. That's a couple of times I've had the uh, painter tape system fail on me. So uh, let me get the cutter out. Let's have a look. So it fails sticking to the, um, the pallet. These pallets are aluminium. I wonder if they'd be better off if they were steel. Anyway, let me, um, uh, I'll cut the edges off this and then just plonk it in and conventionally mill it to size. So uh, I'll do that off camera. Here are all the parts. Um, this is the one that got scrapped. So we'll put that in the bucket of Boken Dream. Uh, so got to weld that and that and that back together again test it and paint it some creative fixturing to get this at 90 degrees to uh, this axis at 90 degrees to that axis so uh, now I just need to tack that in and then finish welding it all together Is um, one thing I wanted to try before I fill and paint this. Let's just um, put it together. Just the scale. There's a ruler or rule. So you can see that's pretty damn close. So here are the parts finished, um, resplendent in their coat of um, hammerite type of paint. It's not hammerite, but it's a, a similar sort of stuff. And it's uh, in a colour called pewter. Um, those of you that have followed the channel will, will have seen in a dim and distant, I've uh, rebuilt an optical comparator. And this was the closest paint I could find to the original finish, um, which was a grey, a uh, grey silver hammerite. But, um, uh, th this was the, the, the closest I could find and I've got quite a bit left so uh, you're going to see a bit more of this. So um, there we have it, there's the main clamp, sits on the tool post, there's the, um, the clamping uh, plate, a nut to go on the top and, uh, and probably the most important, a, uh, a shoe that uh, stops the bits coming out at you should, it, should a wheel explode. So um, let's just... Um, Put it together and uh, this is snug to say the least. There we go. I'll go around there I think. Yeah. I think this is my first design error. Rather than having three screws going through this way to clamp it, the central one would have been better going the other way to force the, uh, the, the, the ring apart so that it makes it easier to get the router 
body in and out, but um, you learn, don't you? Oh, I should just say, um, off camera I made this. This is a, a, a half carat diamond wheel dresser that I've had for donkey's years. And um, if you could uh, uh, imagine the, the wheel mounted in the lathe so, like so, um, hold this bar in the lathe and you can dress that edge. Or if you hold this bar in the lathe, you can dress the front face. So um, we can get absolutely 90 degrees square to the axis of the of the machine dressed wheels okay first test we're on minimum speed let's turn it on <coughs> there's a little bit of vibration i can feel here there's a lot less on the top slide cross slide even less on the saddle is virtually and you virtually can't feel it on the bed yeah it's almost non-existent on this chuck oddly enough you can feel it more on this chuck that's hard isn't it anyway i'll put a wheel in and we'll have a go but i will leave off the uh, the shroud the the protective shroud just so that we can see what's going on I wouldn't normally do that because I think it's bloody dangerous. I use the real top quality spanner that came with the with the router. Just snug that up. Boy, you can see how much wibbly wobbly there is there. Let me just stand aside and we'll try it. Yeah, just look how out of balance that is. Do you know, I'm going to leave this in for, a, for just a demonstration so we can all see what it's like, but um, I think the central arbour, I think in all honesty, my best bet would be to make my own. I've put a few rags over the uh, bed of the lathe so that I don't get uh, too much problems, hopefully with dust. That certainly feels good. There's an imperfection in that stone. Anyway, uh, let me just run it. The vibration has gone down dramatically. Yeah. Right, let's try something. Right, this is one of the reasons I decided to build this. This is an embryo tool holder. Eventually it'll look like that for my um, little mill. And um, the inside edge here is just turned and I really wanted to um, grind that just to see whether or not I could get a really nice flat finish. So uh, let me set up and we'll have a go.
is a very fine cross hatching that you can pick up but uh, there you go you can see a bit of that there right I, this is the closest I can get with the lenses I've got and uh, I have to say that is really really nice Right, so back over at the lathe, I've got a piece of, um, uh, it was supposedly high speed steel, but uh, it rusted, so I don't think it's high speed steel. I think it's medium carbon steel that's been hardened and it was sold as high speed steel, but it clearly isn't. So uh, let's try and just do a little bit on the surface of this and see what uh, kind of finish we get from that. Okay, let's take that over to the bench and we'll have a look. Again, this is about as close as I can get with my um, current lenses. I think we'd buy that, wouldn't we? That looks, to me, that looks bloody good. There's a mark or two there. But generally, the surface finish on that is really, for a first attempt, I'm pretty chuffed with that. Look at this tool holder as well. There you go, you can see the... Um, there you go, you can see the styrations. But again, that is really, really nice. Good enough for the sort of stuff I do. Right, there's one more thing I'm going to try. I've just... Um, Canted the um, uh, grinder over at uh, some random angle. Uh, I'm not even adjusted the top slide, I've just literally just used the tool post position. So um, let me grind this and, uh, and we'll have a look at that as well. is truly gorgeous. Look at that. I'm really impressed with that. That's taken that to an absolute hypodermic point. And uh, just for scale, there you go. And um, let's do that for you Imperial fans out there. That is truly astonishing. Just for completeness, this is how the safety guard and shroud fits on. Uh, it slides onto the end of the router. It's the same diameter as the uh, uh, clamping sleeve. Uh, and there's a four mil screw that you can't quite see around the back here that, that locks it in position. And um, the shop vac plugs straight into the bottom. Oop, I haven't tied it up. Uh, the so that uh, you can suck out most of the dust, hopefully, and um, also protect yourself. So, uh, yeah, I left this off in the demonstration because you, you, it shrouds it so well you can't actually see what's going on. Well, uh, thanks for watching, uh, if you've got this far. I have to say that the, um, the surface finish that I've uh, got on the parts I've just tried this thing out on has been absolutely astonishing. Really, really pleased. Um, it's cheap. The palm router was about $52 pounds and there's what, a five, five or ten dollar pounds worth of parts, metal in it and, uh, and a few days of, uh, of work to make it. If you do make one, for goodness sake, make yourself a shroud, a safety guard, because if one of these wheels explodes in your face, it's going to ruin your day forever. So uh, do that. 
thanks for watching it's but this has been an absolute blast i really enjoyed making this uh take care look after yourself do hit the uh, subscribe bell and this and the spanner and uh notification and we will see you on the next one where i might actually use this to make something we'll see